Welcome to our program, Coach to Coach. Today's guest is Hakan Akbis. Hakan is a coach, trainer, and explorer at Hakan Akbis Transformative Coach. Hakan is also the host of Unleashing Your Awesomeness podcast. And we are also colleagues on Jamie Smart's Clarity Coach Training. Thank you for joining us today, Hakan. It's so great to see you. Oh, man, it's so awesome to be in your presence again, Greg. Yeah, my pleasure. And you know what? You did your homework, right? You know, with that podcast, because I did that podcast and I stopped doing it last year. Yeah. So it's something that I did um, when I was doing Michael Neal's Creating the Impossible. Mm. So that was like a product of that. And um, it came to the point where I felt it's run its course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the good thing about when you do a project like that, it, it you know, it's there forever if you want it to be online, like for people to listen to. I'll tell, can I tell you a funny story? So, I mean, we, we met over the last year that we were on CCT together online. And then we had, I had the pleasure of meeting you in person in July when I visited London, which was awesome. Um, but a year, I remember, I don't remember the exact date, but the, the summer before we were camping as a family and my daughter was working, running this baseball thing called Girls at Bat. Uh, the university where she goes. So she, on the Tuesday night of our camping trip, she had to, I had to drive her into town to to run this program and sit there and watch her. And I was listening to podcasts and things. And, and I don't know how it is I came across your podcast. It must have been on Facebook or whatever. But the episode I listened to was you were interviewing Bear McKenzie. Now, the funny thing. Oh, yeah. The funny thing with Bear, when, the first time I went through CCT, he was my mentor. <laughs> yeah, I remember you mentioned that. Yeah, so... You know, so I mean, it, it was cool to to um, be listening to you interviewing somebody who'd been my mentor on that program, and then you fast forward to this past year where I got to be your mentor for a short period of time. So it's funny how the things come full circle. I tell you something about that podcast. So I originally created it to basically for people to um, share their experience of the free principles. Mm how it's impacted them. And then during the podcast, something happened and it impacted me in a dramatic way. So there was two people that I interviewed, um, Birdie, Matt, um, Birdie Brown and yeah. Billy Mann. And something in their podcast, in our conversations, and one of the things that we were speaking about is how they actually had life-threatening illnesses mm. and how they were able to still maintain that zest for life, you know, that excitement, aliveness. And it somehow dawned upon me is because so many times we hear these stories about, well, you know, I had cancer or I had this or I had that. And then I realized life is for living. Mm. And then I realized through their conversations is I don't need to be at death's door to have that zest for life. And that like changed everything for me. Yeah. And it was as if starting that podcast and all the steps that led to uh, Birdie and Billy were just created for me that's the only way i can yeah. actually describe if i didn't go through those steps i wouldn't have come across them and i wouldn't have had that conversation yeah yeah that's awesome it's and it's ironic that you, you're telling that story because i literally just before this was out for a walk listening to uh the book the untethered soul by michael singer and it, the chapter i just listened to today was about uh the, the i can't remember the exact words it's something like uh Every minute that passes, you're one minute closer to death. Like we're we're, we're all dying. It's just a matter of, oh. of of when. And it was the whole message was about the zest for life and and you know and living. He, he told a story about like when death finally comes for you, you'll be begging it for one more week, and death will be like one more. Yeah, week. I just gave you fifty two weeks in this last year, and you didn't. Yeah. And you wasted them. <laughs> oh man, I spoke to um, Teresa Walden. Mm. Yes, I don't know if you know no. her. She is a principal-based, I might get this wrong, but she 
trains nurses to coach around the principles. Yeah. And some of the things that we basically were talking about, and she mentioned this, and this has impacted me on a level, on a different level. She basically said, no one gets out of here alive. Mm. And what's your QTR? Quality time remaining. Mm. I'm like, wow. There were so many things that yeah. we spoke about. Um, it, I can't sort of really articulate. I can't remember every single thing, but there's this feeling and sense that I've got. Mm. It's, you know, this is it. Yeah. We're in paradise already. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm uh, honored that you've chosen to spend some of your QTR with me today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's always an other. So we hit me with the first yeah. question. So we've already gotten started, but the way I usually start is to ask, "What first sparked your interest in coaching?" Do you know I was thinking about that earlier on, and I'm thinking there's so many different things that happened for me to actually led to my interest in coaching. Um, but I think for me, it's, I've always grown up with this knowing that I and everyone else, there's potential possibility for more. There's so much on offer that I grew up with this. And I also grew up with this, if you're going to, this is the family paradigm. It's, if you're going to do anything, it's going to be hard work and it's going to be a struggle and it's going to be effortful. And I've gone through my life with this sort of seesaw. It's like, right, we've got, there's so much possibilities for us. It's, you know, more than maybe we can actually imagine. And then, the other side, it's like, this is going to be fucking effing hard work. There. You know, it's going to be effort. You want to achieve something, you know, you hard work. And it's like, when I say hard work, it's like the real struggle. Mm. So I've gone through life with this sort of see, So I always could see potential in others, but I know there's potential in me, but I can't seem to realize it. So something led me on the personal development bandwagon. Um, and I think it was when I was at university, this guy, he started to talk about how the mind works and how we do things subconsciously and something like that. And something just sparked. I knew something had to do with the mind. Mm. Funny thing is, this guy, I never spoke to him throughout the whole of the course, but he somehow played some sort of catalyst in my life. So anyway, I go on this journey on this personal development man wagon, and this efforting thing always came up. You know, I'm doing visualizations, affirmations, and it's so much efforting and hard work. And it's like as if um, what I believe to be true was actually playing out there. So I'm going through life on and off this bandwagon. On the journey, somehow or another, I had this interest in coaching. It sounds pretty cool, mm. you know, speaking to people and helping them with their possibilities. That sounded cool. I'd love to do that and get paid for it. So while I'm on this on and off the bandwagon, I come to the point where the pandemic's hit pandemic's hit i'm going through a divorce um uh working from home and everything and it's at that point i realized i needed order and structure in my life mm. things cannot go on the way they're going on so i go on a productivity program great increase my productivity in everything and then i get reintroduced to michael neal and I knew Michael Neal from um, his NLP days. So anyway, he starts to talk about the principles. I didn't get it, but it resonated with me. Uh, 
somehow things started to click in and I started to have insights along the way. And then I thought, yeah, this is something I really want to do, the coaching. And it's like as if it's as if it's my calling. Mm. So and what I've realized for me now is it doesn't make a difference what I do. Like if I do a different career, if I do basket weaving, you know, that, that coachness is will still be with me. So, and then it was, I did some coaching programs with Michael Neal. And it wasn't until I met um, Dave Kibbe. And that's when I realized I thought I had my toes in the, actually, I, I thought I had my foot in the water of coaching. Right? And I realized I was just dipping the tips of my toes because I didn't make a commitment and that scared the crap out of me Mm. because commitment, all about the unknown, all about that. And that always scared me. Anyway, and then um, I got to see what's possible for me. And then I basically decided to join Jamie and that's my journey to date. And I get the feel, and I'm hearing myself talking about that. That is a so damn wind, long-winded way of explaining how I got into becoming yeah, a great. coach. It's great. I love he- I love hearing the uh, the origin story. It's uh, it's great. Yeah, I, I uh, I've had a few interactions with Dave Kibbe. He's he's amazing. He's uh, I was he did a course or a master class, whatever call, with probably a couple months ago now on. Uh, going from an empty practice to a full practice and yeah. had all kinds of great ideas and learnings and things. So yeah, really uh, nothing but respect for, for Dave. Um, so he also, yeah, he also did, um, I don't know if he'd done CCT, but he's actually um, done training through Jamie. Yeah. I think he did do CCT if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think I've saw him a little bit on some, some of the other programs along the way too. So yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all in kindred spirits here for sure. Um, oh. So in terms of your coaching practice and who you're working with, who you'd love to work with, you know, yeah. uh, ideal clients and, and how you mentioned the three principles, maybe explain a little bit about how, what your approach is and how you go about helping folks. So my practice is one that's evolving. Um. However, the type of people that I seem drawn to and there's a kind of resonance to me, like relatability. So the way I could describe it, these are people that who are silent strugglers. These are people that they could be really outwardly successful, but inwardly struggling. Um you know, like the way I can describe it is like as if sometimes like there's a high bar that they have to maintain a, a particular image they have to project or maintain that image because you know if they if they saw the real me, holy crap, you know, and it's those type of people that who seem to go through life as if they've got like a backpack on their back and it's like holding them back you know Mm. uh either holding them back when they're going forward or just in their day-to-day you know it's this backpack is holding me down and if only this backpack could just come off life would be so much easier so i'm sort of drawn to those type of people. Um, and and these type of people, what I've noticed is that, um, I'm trying to think of the right sort of this. But yeah, like people that who know that, right? They look at them and they'll think, ah, oh, they got it made. They've got this and they've got that. 
But those that who are really, really close to them get a glimpse of actually what I'm going to say is who they think they are. Mm. So it's basically like those type of people. And it's basically a case of pointing them in a direction, you know, um, that the backpack there that's holding them back is actually empty. Mm. You know, it it really doesn't exist. And the thing is, it really does feel like all the stuff exists in there. Yeah. Yeah, Someone mentioned, (laughs) it's all the stuff that goes on inside us where it seems so real, like as if it's in a physical world real. Yeah. But you can't take all of those stuff and put them in a, a teacup or a wheelbarrow. I don't know if it's surprising. You know, I I was one of those people. I had a backpack for, <laughs> <laughs> for like 15 years. And for me, it wasn't so much the realization that it was empty as much as it was the realization I could put it down. Yes. And I didn't have to pick it up again. Like there was there I didn't I didn't need to be carrying it around with me. And uh and that was that was the the result of a peer coaching with uh one of the first peer coaches I ever had in 2021. So yeah, that was it's huge. So I got a question. <clears throat> Shoot. Now, this backpack, previously for your training and the peer coaching, yeah. um, was you aware of it being on your back or was it just this uh, meh type of feeling that you have? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say the feeling of it was um I wasn't happy, but yeah. I wasn't unhappy either. I was kind of neutral. I was just kind of like you know, neutral, just blah. Or my son used to say I'd say how's your day and go meh. <laughs> yeah. That was the kind of life I was living, just a meh life. And uh and I knew I was, I don't know if I, if it was a backpack or a sack or how I would describe it, but I, I knew I had this weight of something that I was carrying. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, it wasn't the case. Well, it was, it was more of this feeling of something's missing. Something, I, there's something, I'm going to use the word something out there. Mm. Yeah, there's there's something missing, and it's I had this um, anxiousness, yeah, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize. I, if I were to explain what I felt like, the anxiousness type of feelings I had, I didn't have them every single minute of the day, but predominantly most of the time. Someone else would have turned around and say anxiety, but I didn't know it. It yeah. was that. I actually thought that was me. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was someone that who was serious, um, waiting for when the going's good, waiting for like the shoe to fall off. Oh, man, it's such a struggle. You know, I, I want to do this, but it's so damn hard work. Yeah. I actually thought that was me. Mm. And I was just trying to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day it hit me as like, that's not you. That's just the thinking of who you think you are. Mm. And I'm like, all these years, that's who I thought I was. But that's not me. Yeah. Love it. The power of insight. That's cool. Kind of leads into the next question about uh, sharing some examples. So, I mean, we've both just given some personal examples. Do you have any uh, other examples you want to share either of yourself or with clients that you've worked with? Um, so, uh, this is, I find interesting. Um, I'm having conversations with 
the potential. And we're having these conversations that he, you know, what he wants, what he really wants. And he came, the first sort of themes was about, he wants to, he's, he's thinking about what kind of a things I can do that uh, make me feel more alive, more en- excited, more, uh, yeah, one, um, basically, he told me this story. Ah, he was in Canada, right? Mm. Um, you know where there was there was a time there was these hurricanes? Yeah. And he was on an island. And they couldn't get off the island for about four months. Mm. Does that ring any bells with you? No, well, it would have been East Coast, <laughs> East Coast I'm guessing. Like, uh, New, Most probably. New Brunswick, yeah, PEI. So he's on this island, and he found that like, he's helping people out on the island, like they're chopping trees, moving trees, helping them with their buildings and stuff like that. And he found himself feeling so alive and so full of joy Mm. and he wants to recapture that so we're having these conversations and during these conversations i'm trying to what i'm doing is get an understanding of what he really wants like uh get on his raft we've had about three two hour conversations Mm. And then on the last one, just at the end of our conversation, right, it really hit what he really wanted. He wanted to feel that aliveness within him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to bring that, you know, because when we come from that point of that aliveness, it really doesn't make a difference what type of a business you do, um, you know, when you come from that aliveness, that's going to, whatever's from, uh, reflecting on the inside shows out on the outside. Mm. doesn't mean like there's going to be work to do. It might be hard work for him to do, but when you're coming from that, it makes it so much easier. Mm. And that experience, what showed for me is basically um, tip of the iceberg. You know, there's times like um, uh, there's something that we want, Mm. but what we really want is something more deeper. Mm. It's like earlier on, I mentioned about the podcast that came out, Michael O'Neill's Creating the Impossible. I never intended to do that podcast. I never. I just had this financial goal. That'd be cool. Somehow that morphed into the podcast. Mm. Don't know how, don't know why. But it morphed into that. And as a result of morphing into that, I got that insight. I don't need to be at death store to have that zest for life. Mm. Love it. Yeah, the 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 word that you said that really is resonating with me is being. You know, the the uh, coming from that place of being and the power of that. Like you said, it do, it doesn't matter what you're doing, what kind of business you're running, where you are in the world, who you're working with. When you're coming from that source. Um, oh the joy and the happiness and the fulfillment is all there already. Yeah, I mean, like, um, we're already living in paradise. Yeah. There was this Indian guru. I can't remember his name. And he's flying to the States, gets out of the airport, sees all these people, like, um, up in their heads, going through their daily life and stuff like that. And he looks at them and goes, man, they are living in paradise, but they don't even know it. Mm. 
Unfortunately, that is most people. Which is great for us because we're coaches. We can <laughs> help them uh, figure that, that out. If there's one thing from all this, Akon, that you'd want people to know or take away from this conversation, what, what would that one thing be? That's so damn difficult, right? Mm -hmm. That's so damn difficult because there's more than one thing. What's the first one thing on your list? <laughs> uh, do I have permission for two? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, I'm going to most probably say this incorrect, but I think it's what Sid Banks said. If the only thing people to be aware of or know or say... Is that they don't need to be scared of their experiences, mm. afraid. I most probably butchered that. Yeah. No, the sense of it was right. Yeah. Yeah. And the second one is we are more than our thinking of ourselves. And when we see that, there's more to us than that. There's more to other people than our thinking of them. Mm. Love it. Yeah. I don't, th I don't think I've ever heard somebody put that twist on it, but uh, yeah. I like that. Because, like, even our thinking of someone else isn't actually them. Mm. It's actually our thinking of them. Yeah. Yeah. Who we think they are. It reminds me of... Uh... Well, Jamie uses that quote from I forget the guy's name. You know, we're not uh, six billion um, people having a human experience. We're, we're we're one spiritual being having six billion human experiences. Is that how it goes? I may put yeah yeah uh, yes. between these things left right <laughs> center. The idea, like the 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 whole the point I'm trying to make is the you're not your thinking. Other people aren't you're thinking of them. They're not their the thinking they're having either. But at the same time, we're all that one spiritual being. We're all connected. Yeah. That's so damn I'm starting to see that in a different light. Yeah. Yeah. We're one spiritual being and we're having six billion different experiences. Mm -hmm. Wow. Love it. If people are interested in learning more about you or getting in touch with you, what's the best place for them to go? Well, there's three places. <laughs> Facebook, LinkedIn, and my email. That's coached by Harkan at hotmail.com. Right. So those are the three places. Those are the three places I hang out. <laughs> nice. And I've realized how strange that sounds like hanging out in your email. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh maybe less so these days than than bef than when I was at work, but I, I used to hang out in my email like 40 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh we mentioned your podcast. You said you're not doing it anymore, but if if somebody wanted to look that up, is it easy to find or? Yeah. Um, I think the URL is unleashing your awesomeness. Okay. Great. So, uh, so I'll, I'll um, find the link and I'll put it in this. Uh, okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. I love, I, I know when you and I first connected because, you know, in people, when they check you out on Facebook, we'll see 
you've got like a little caricature with a, a Superman t-shirt on. <laughs> I have a, I have a caricature of myself with a, a, a shirt that's the same color as the Superman shirt, but it's my, my team unleash your potential logo. And my whole thing is unleashing potential. And your, your podcast was unleash your awesomeness. So it was like, Oh, we're meant, we're the two of us are meant oh, working together some way, shape or form. So. Oh, that. But, Awesome, Craig. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate our time. Yeah, my together. Pleasure. I, I wrote down, I I'm going to use that QTR quality time remaining. I love that. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Akon. We'll see you. Uh, Take care. Soon.